Hello, this is Sid Embraces Anarchism. Uh, it's an automaton that's powered by a Geneva wheel. If you look at the cams, the back there, you'll see that they don't move all the time. They only move periodically. And that's the Geneva wheel driving them there. And in this video, I'll, uh, I'll give you a demo of it working and also uh, discuss Geneva wheels and uh, how I use them and how I design them, show you one how they work and also just show you just how efficient they are and how fast they will run. They're actually quite easy to uh, design and make, so uh, let's get on with it. I'll just show you how Sid works. The dog looks at the man and then he wheezes on the man's leg. The man looks round and then there's a still bit. And this is all driven by the Geneva wheel in four phases. OK, this is uh, something I made for a bit of fun and that's a Geneva wheel attached to a Makita electric drill. I wanted to see how fast I could get it to run and uh, in this demonstration I actually get it up to 1500 rpm and it's running quite smoothly at that. As you can see when it's running fast it looks as though the driven wheel isn't moving. Perhaps no surprise that these were Geneva wheels were used in the old cine projectors to uh, move the frames and the shutter on the projector to get the film running and they clearly ran very effectively there seeing some of these films are several hours long. Following this let's just have a look at a few automata I've made that run on Geneva wheels. This is a trip to the doctor. You can see these on my channel if you subscribe. Uh, this is Cute Cow, my most complex automaton. As you can see it moves quite slowly because it's very highly geared. And finally my beautiful hair here. Now I'll show you how Geneva wheels work. No expense spared here with the demonstration. First of all we need the drive wheel which has a uh, the drive pin on it. The outside of this can also of course be made into either a gear as part of the gearing or into a cam. And then we need the driven wheel which one is this one. Let's put that, we can get that on. Now then how it works is that each rotation, if we just get it in the right place, the rotation moves it round one quarter. And again, oops, rotation moves it round one quarter and another quarter. Just need a little bit of adjustment there to make it work. Another quarter. So, fairly easy to design. You just need a, a slot the same size as the pin. In this case, four quadrants. And then in the drive shaft, you just have to make sure that when it's on the right radius, that when it hits the pin, it goes into one channel and out of the other. The only problem with these gears is that this will have the cams on this axis. And of course, it's free to move, this, and so it'll rotate round and you'll end up with it jamming and they can jam. Normally, they cannot, so we need to find out how we solve this. So we'll take this one off, we'll leave the drive wheel, and we'll put a more classical driven wheel on there. So again, oops, get it right. There's a quarter, goes round, there's a quarter, goes round, there's a quarter, goes round. But it's still free to move, but what we do now is put a locking wheel on it. So now, if it's a bit closer tolerance at least, this one actually can't rotate at all now until the pin comes round and rotates it and then it goes through that cutout there, look, and locks again. And same again. And that's simply how a Geneva wheel works. It's very useful because to get it right. You get this periodic movement, quite a quick movement, and uh, then no movement at all, and it's all locked. The problem you get with them is if the cams are weighted one side 
what happens is that it will have a pull on it. And so sometimes they'll turn at that last minute and then it will block. So if you, you've either got to try and really balance the cams very well or have an additional little pin that comes down on one of the wheels so that it can't rotate at all. But that's, that's a refinement. It's not the strongest of uh, gears, of course, but it uh, doesn't really matter too much in terms of automata, I think. Actually, uh, once you get them running, clearly cardboard's not the best uh, stuff to use. You've got to get that in the right place. Once you've got them running, they're pretty consistent running runners. Quite a pleasing movement, really. So you can have as many as you want, so five strokes, six strokes, and, it, and you can change the scene each time. Good. There's the Geneva wheel. Right, I'll just show you how I make these Geneva wheels. So first of all, we need the first axis. What we're going to make first is this part here. The the driven wheel. Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit at the moment. So let's just decide how big we want that to be. So we'll just draw that circle and quite a big one. There we go. Now we need to divide it we'll make the four one, so we'll make it into four quadrants. I'll just do this roughly. But uh, clearly, if you're making one, I should be a bit more precise if I were you. And then we need the slots. So we make the slots on this one, five, ten mils, shall we? So we just put it again roughly just to show you the principle of it. Whoops. Okay, now we've got the basis of the driven wheel. So now, so there we are, we've got that one well on shape. Now we need to decide where this second axis and the size of this one goes because the pin has got to come out clearly at the other side. The easiest way of finding that distance is to just measure the distance between the two and then find where they intersect there on the two halves. And that would be the centre of the second pin. So and then we know that the pin has got to be there and we know that this wheel has got to be bigger or wider than the pin to hold the pin obviously so we just put that around there shall we it's going to come off the paper I think but this is the bit that matters so we can design that good so then we want to know how deep those slots make. We know it comes to that part of the slot, so let's go. So we can make the end of the slot there, so. There we have the slots cut. Again, roughly. Good. Now we need this locking piece. How are we going to design that? First of all, we know what the cutout needs to be. It needs to be just outside this radius here. So we know it's going, let's give it a little bit of a gap. So we know it's going to go around there. Just draw that in, shall we? And then we need to decide where these are going to go. We know we need a little bit each side of the slot. So that would be there, wouldn't it? So that would be the cutout. And so the radius of this outer one would be a little bit less than that. So there we have it. So there is the locking wheel. And also there is the 
inner wheel so I just knock those in roughly just to give you the, the idea Oops. good so there we've got all the parts made I think we've got the uh, the pin we've got the outer wheel which is right around there so we've got that outer wheel we've got this locking wheel which goes there and we've got the driven wheel.